Well, we are having a glorious afternoon in the sunshine. Our Ellie looks as though he's thoroughly happy. He's been feeding away at grasses and trees and small little shrubs. And, well, we've been thoroughly enjoying his company too. We've got this big bull elephant, beautiful late afternoon light. It's warm. It's pleasant. There's not a breath of wind. And, well, wouldn't you want... Well, it's no better way, really, to spend a Sunday afternoon. What do you think, Ferg? Very happy. Very happy as well. And both of us this afternoon when we left, we thought it would be nice just to have a really good afternoon with some elephant. And so he is being very obliging. And you can see that deep winter sky in the background is beautiful backdrop for such a magnificent creature. And like I say, he is so relaxed. He's not given us one iota of attitude or any sort of showing that he's acknowledged us even. He's just quite happy to see us sitting here and has not given any problems whatsoever. So you can see, look at the size of his head. He's got a really large head. Now, funny enough, a bit of a wind just came up now over our shoulders. And so you see how he stopped feeding quickly because I'm pretty sure our scent blew towards him and he picked up, hang on, there's a scent of people here as well. And he just stopped just to take a trunk full of air. He then saw us, there we go, you can see, look, he's just smelling us now. The little breeze that just came over our shoulder is causing him just to smell a little bit. Now, what else have you smelt, big boy? This is so amazing. He must be now, I would say, oh, he's no less than three meters from the edge of the car. And he's just having a smell and having a little look. Amazing. Wow. And there's a little butterfly that just went past his eye. So to see one massive animal and then this tiny little butterfly coming past is quite something. Now, Ferg, can you just punch in above his tusk um, on his trunk there. You'll see it go to the right a little bit. Now uh, there's actually a wound there. I don't know if you can see it between the tusk and the eye that's busy healing up and he's got a bit of a wound there. So I think he's had a little run in with another elephant and if we come further down the trunk you'll actually see there we go. There's actually an open wound and hasn't healed as much. So there we go. And that's cool to get into where that wound is. That's really cool. And this would have been from another male's tusks when they were jostling with one another this does happen a sharper tusk just catches that trunk a bit and causes a little flesh wound now that won't really harm this elephant that's nothing for him but it is quite cool to see we're never generally this close to an elephant that we can actually see that and like i say he's feeding not even a Thing. He doesn't really want to go to the shops and go window shopping and look at all the clothes. He wants to do his own thing and watch the sport and sit on the couch. And so that's why he lives by himself. And then only when he has to try and find a female does he come into this area. Hello, big boy. This is unbelievable. What a gentleman. Wow. You can only be in awe when you are that close to an elephant bull. And I think this is a good time for a one-word tweet. So hashtag Safari Live, what you would have felt had you had an elephant no less than, I would say, four feet from the edge of the vehicle feeding on a tree. He was literally right here, almost in touching distance of where Ferg was. So one-word tweet, hashtag Safari Live. For me, it is just you become absolutely speechless. It is an experience that I cannot describe to you. It's absolute awe when there's this massive individual towering over you, looking at you with this bright amber eye and just sort of patiently feeding. It is quite, quite something. So that is as special as it gets for me all. And Ferg, do you enjoy that? I really enjoyed that. There I'm we go. Humbling, humbling. Humbling is probably a good way to do it. So very, very nice. And there is, like I say, an, a feeling of feeling quite insignificant when there's an animal of that size sort of perched up right next to you. You almost feel as though you realize just how big these guys really are. You know, when we see them from a distance, even from this distance here, you think, well, this is not the most sort of massive animal out here and there are bigger bull elephants but when he gets up that close and you realize that this car would fit underneath his chin you realize just how big these guys really are and it is really humbling as well as just sort of I don't know it's intimidating in a way you kind of feel this presence of this massive animal over you and it's it's quite something and certainly very thankful to be able to spend time amongst these guys as much as I love leopards, and well, leopards are pretty much my favorite thing to just go and see any day of the week, spending time amongst these big, gentle giants is amazing.
So Pamela, you say honoured. Well, I would say that's a really good word to use. It is an honour to be amongst, or be next to a big elephant like this. You know, these animals have had so much to endure in their lives. They've, you know, it's not easy being an elephant. You've got to travel big distances. Food is always something that you've got to find as well as the fact that the threat from people is huge and so their numbers have declined massively over the African continent and so to be able to sit with them in the wild and just be right near an elephant that's trusting you that much and allowing you to be that close is a very very special experience so honored is probably a very good way to put it so thank you for that David you David, you with Ferg, you reckon humbling. Well, I agree, David. I think you and Ferg have been spot on. Now, he's not being very humbling now because he's busy spraying urine all over the show and has definitely decided to show that he is a boy at this stage. So there we go. Unfortunately, <laughs> he's letting it all now hang out. So not as pretty a picture as what it was a few minutes ago, that's for sure. But you can see every now and then he just stops and listens to us and if the wind blows slightly, then that straight away he kind of turns and trunk aimed at us and just kind of scenting us, checking what we're all about, making sure that we're up, not up to no good. It's quite interesting just to watch his behavior. I've thoroughly enjoyed watching every now and then when that wind does blow. And because it's been so still, I think he's kind of forgets that we're here. And then as soon as that wind picks up, he, he realizes, hang on a second, there's more than just a car here. And, I need to just check this out and make sure that it's not something I have to worry about. Look at all the insects as well following him. You can see why the drongos and the rollers love to be around them. You can see there all those little winged insects flying around. And some of those would have come from that trunk wound. Others are just following him around, like we said, to land on the skin and sequester the moisture that is on him at the moment. And so it's different insects that are there and perfect hunting grounds for many a bird. And that's why you often find them following big elephant bulls. In fact, there's been documentaries done on even bee eaters that follow these ellies around, particularly in grassland areas, that they can just come along and grab all the insects that this guy disturbs. Wow. So, so special.